In today's video, there's only two news stories I really want to focus on because it appears that there's some ex WWE talent or maybe even just some AEW talent in general who are not happy about MJF's comments. This is going to be really interesting to talk about. Um, and then also the second half of the video, we're going to talk about Cody Rhodes, Hell in a Cell, because there is a chance that Cody Rhodes actually may have been pulled from the event. It's a really strange situation that's happening. So we'll talk about it in just a moment. Um, so for those who are unaware of what is happening, uh, there was uh, a whole bunch of talk this past weekend, uh, mainly due to MJF and AEW and essentially that pipe bomb promo, is it a work, is it a shoot? Um, obviously, a lot of people are still coming up with their own opinions on this, but Wade Keller uh, on PWTorch.com was talking about this, and um, there's there seems to be some interesting stuff here. So basically... Uh, what Keller said is, I know of wrestlers who of uh, who MJF was saying all the things that he said in the promo to, but in real life conversations that didn't in any way seem to play into a strategy to work the dirt sheets or work Tony Khan or whatever you think uh, that the con in the game was. Who are now asking, who is Max? How much of what he of what he was saying was just part of this elaborate web of trying to create this believable long arc that would elevate him to? some higher status that'll give him an even bigger deal. Uh, he continues to talk about this and he says, there's wrestlers whose eyebrows were raised uh, that he heard from. So Wade Keller heard from other people. Uh, and basically these people were like, hey, we don't make people feel. Uh, is that what Tony Tony's authorizing wrestlers to say on air? That all the stuff that we're doing to our bodies doesn't make people feel, but a guy who in three years worked 22 matches on average, about seven per year for this company, is getting to go on TV and disparage what we do in a promo that led to fans cheering him because he kind of got some sort of heel, um, you know, on X WWE guys type thing. Uh, like there's a bunch of money being spent on external TV guys who are just thrown under the bus on a promo. Uh, to generate a buzz. So even if Tony Khan hasn't lied to anybody's face about this, within hours of that promo, there's people in AEW talking to each other, uh, you know, going, what? What's going on here? Where we worked? Whose side is Tony on? Is he the captain of the ship? Did MJF work him? Can we please know what's going on here? And by the way, can you stop throwing us under the bus and making us look bad? Now, I find this to be a very interesting situation because obviously everybody knows that MJF is pretty much always in character. Uh, even when he does these signings and stuff. Obviously, there is a lot of confusion here too because AEW has removed MJF from the TV intro, from the websites, from the roster. There's been no mention of this promo, which is exactly what you would try to do if you were trying to work everybody. Um, so I think there's a lot of people that are confused but also frustrated here. And, you know, it just seems like whatever has happened here is definitely going to cause some sort of issue. Um, or maybe not, maybe there's not going to be some sort of issue. Maybe this is all part of the plan, right? Getting dirt sheets, getting YouTubers, getting everybody to talk about it. Um, you know, I, I said this from, from the beginning, like MJF, regardless of where he is, he needs to get the bag. Um, he is the best on the mic. Uh, you know, AEW has a very big lack of characters on their show. And MJF is one of the guys who, I mean, he's probably the strongest character on television in either company. Um, just largely due to the fact that when you watch him, you don't know what, what lines are blurred or whatever. So, you know, um, I, I think the issue here really stems from two things. One, Tony Khan, uh, he's in a tricky situation, honestly, because if this, let's just say this is all one massive work, he's working everybody, uh, from the beginning, this was all part of the plan, like whatever it may be, um, you know, to have a whole bunch of WWE guys come in there. I mean, it does look pretty bad when your own company has somebody, you know, if you're Tony Khan and you're telling, telling your wrestler, go off and, and shoot off from the hip about how we're signing WWE talent and talk shit about them, blah, blah, blah. Like it would be a very strange situation. Uh, but also the second thing too, that I really want to mention is that for AEW here, uh, and the reason why it's so tricky for Tony Khan is because at the end of the day, people want compelling television from Tony Khan and this is obviously compelling television. People are talking about it nonstop every single day. But at what cost are you giving, you know, this type of television to your audience? So I think a lot of people enjoy this, but I think this is kind of like the Cody Rhodes thing. Like after so many times of talking about it, like we're tired of talking about it. I know I am, um, but that's why, you know, my job is to bring you guys updates, give you guys my analysis based on what we know. Uh, if this is all one big work shoot, the next thing you know, MJF becomes the world champion. Like to me, I, I think that was just, not the right 
direction. I don't feel like you would have had to go that direction. I feel like there's a lot of ways to book MJF and CM Punk for the world title. Um, and now CM Punk, uh, he didn't vacate the belt, but there's an interim championship. So it all just gets too confusing here. Uh, it's one big mess. I, I think, I mean, we can't say if this is good or bad until like a year from now or whenever the payoff comes. But I would say as of right now, as I'm watching this, like it was really cool to see that MJF promo, but at the same time too, like not necessary. Um, and because it's not necessary, I just wish AEW would have, instead of always trying to have a surprise factor for AEW, I just wish they really just focused on good stories because look at how great the story is for Wardlow and MJF. And then now nobody's talking about Wardlow. Um, this is, this is an issue that AEW has and I hope it gets resolved. All right, guys, now I want to turn our attention really quickly to Cody Rhodes. Uh, this is a very interesting thing that's happening here because nobody really knows for sure if WWE has officially pulled Cody Rhodes. Um, uh, you would hope that WWE would announce it ahead of time, but it is WWE and WWE is stupid when it comes to things like this. We have seen that time and time again. Uh, WWE, you know, card subject to change for sure, but WWE will sometimes advertise things and just not do it. Um, this is obviously the marquee match for Hell in a Cell, which is why it's interesting. But basically, WWE had its Saturday night main event house show. And essentially, it was Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins that was advertised as normal. This is what WWE does. Um, however, just before the match began, it was announced that Cody Rhodes was injured and then that Drew McIntyre would replace him in the match. Um, just so everybody knows, Drew went on to defeat Rollins. Uh, and despite the injury uh, that, that Cody Rhodes has... Uh, he still did some stuff post-match with Seth Rollins. Um, so I'm not sure for one or two reasons why WWE would advertise this match that people are paying for and then pull the match. And then despite an injury, this guy is going to come out and have some sort of run-in with Seth Rollins, right? Um, first of all, if I was a fan paying for tickets here, I would feel cheated because I want the match with Seth Rollins and Cody, right? It's a house show. Uh, part of the house show is, you know, they have a little bit more freedom to do things in the ring, whatever. And plus, it's not televised. So because it's not televised, it's not necessarily must see. Um, however, you know, to watch Cody and Seth, it would have been really fun. And then if I'm going to a house show and I pay for my tickets and then they pull this match due to an injury. But then, by the way, he's having a run in. Uh, kind of makes you scratch your head. So I don't know what the hell WWE was thinking here. We don't know if Cody Rhodes has been removed from the pay-per-view. We'll find out. But... Very, very interesting stuff. I don't like this whatsoever. That's my thoughts. That's my two cents. Let me know what you guys think down below.